When it comes to putting, the most common question I get asked is, should I be using my wrists in the putting stroke? Well, even if you think the wrists shouldn't be involved, the reality is the wrists are moving in every single putting stroke. The question is, is your wrist movement helping you or hurting you? With the help of the Hack Motion wrist sensor, today we're going to dive into what the wrist should be doing and I'll give you some drills that you can take next time you go to the putting green in order to help improve your stroke. Let's first start by defining the ways in which the wrists can move and we'll keep it as simple as possible. There's really three ways in which the wrists can move or at least three planes of motion. The first one would be rotation. So twisting this putter and the putter face about the shaft and this axis here around the shaft. That would be influential in terms of opening or closing the club face. It's a really important piece for putting. Secondly, we can have in-plane motion, which is flexion and extension of the wrist. So this putter is moving nicely in plane, but I'm influencing quite strongly the loft that I'm delivering to this putter. I could de-loft the putter significantly if I added lots of lead wrist flexion, and I could add loft if I added too much lead wrist extension. So managing flexion extension does have some influence on the putter face angle, but it also very significantly affects loft and launch of the golf ball. And the third way the wrist can move is in this out of plane motion, which is in and out effectively, on a deviation of the wrist where the wrist hinges more downwards or radial deviation of the wrist where the wrists start to cock or hinge upwards. These are large movements that I'm making here to demonstrate the actual movements of the wrist, but actually the wrist movements typically in putting are quite small. It's actually one of the key areas that I use hack motion in my coaching day to day because what you can often see on a camera with a full swing and get some idea of what the wrists are doing is almost impossible to see when it comes to putting. The margins and the numbers are so small. So when it comes to identifying what's really going on at the wrist level using hack motion for putting is probably the most beneficial use that I have for it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit a putt get some data on the hack motion and you'll see from the feedback there immediately that I tend to flex my wrist too much when I putt in the backswing. I'm flexing my wrist to add length to the stroke. This is a problem I struggle with and practice at times to try and overcome. The drill I'm gonna share with you next is gonna to help to take care of any of you who have these wrists that are unstable throughout the swing. And the great thing about this exercise is it doesn't just help the flexion extension piece, it also helps that up and down radial piece as well. So I call this drill the chopsticks drill and I absolutely love it. And in a minute you'll realize why I call it chopsticks. You're gonna need two alignment sticks, you're gonna need one rubber band or hair tie or something similar and you are going to wrap your elastic band or whatever you have around the base or the bottom of these alignment sticks to the point where you've got these alignment sticks stuck together so they create this sort of chopsticks effect and even without a club just to start with sliding these chopsticks or these alignment sticks under your arms and just holding them between your upper arms and your body you're going to start to get a sense of how the body, the arms work together in this really nice structured way. And you can actually get a sense of this even without the club. So just getting hold of these two alignment sticks, taking one in each hand and getting that movement from the torso just to get your body involved in the putting stroke. When you're ready to introduce the club, we can grab the putter and we're going to be able to sit the shaft of the putter in this cradle that we've created. So even now without the ball, we've introduced the club, but even without the ball, just letting the shaft sit in the cradle and we can really just start to move this putter back and forth. I can already get a sense of how much more stable that is, both from a flexion extension point of view, it's quite difficult for me to flick my wrists. If I did, I'd get a lot of feedback of the shaft jumping around inside the sticks. And equally from this up and down movement, I'm it's harder for me to move the putter away or bring the putter too much closer to me because it's sitting in this cradle. So this is going to give me a really nice sense of how to move the body, the arms and the club together in the putting stroke to create something that's a lot more stable and a lot more repeatable. So that felt a little different to me. In fact, if anything, I overdid the correction. So I slightly 
extending my wrist too much going back there. I'm gonna hit another one and just see how that feels. I, I'm gonna get a sense of how moving everything at once can help me to produce some more stability in my wrists. That one felt pretty good. Those numbers are coming down, getting closer to the sort of more neutral position of the wrist. What's really interesting here, hopefully for you to see, is that even though the stroke probably doesn't look that different on the camera, the numbers in the wrist change quite dramatically. And that just goes to show how important measuring your wrists are when you putt. Got one in range there in the up and down portion. I'm still a little bit too flexed in this lead wrist, so I'd have to keep practicing this until I was able to maintain that similar amount of wrist bend and not have my wrist moving too extreme. Try this exercise. If you've never tried it, I really encourage you to give it a go. It gives a great sense of that stability and that connection that you want to create when you're learning to improve your putting. Quick question for you. Did you know that 80% of your golf ball's direction comes from the club face angle at impact? And it's your wrists that control that angle. If you want to hit straighter shots and add more distance to your game, then check out the link in the description below. And if you're looking for something even more simple than the chopsticks, then there's two more drills I'll share with you that could not be any more straightforward. All of these drills I'm sharing with you, you could do at the putting green, just like I am, or you could do these indoors in the comfort of your own home. You don't even need a putting mat. As I said, with the chopsticks, you don't even need a putter or a ball. But if you wanted to take this drill and now expand it to something even more simple, you're gonna just need two tee pegs two tee pegs and this is one of the oldest exercises you'll have seen where golfers bend down and place a tee peg either side of their putter head. If you want to control the amount of ulnar and radial deviation in your stroke, meaning the amount of upward or downward hinging of the wrists, having a gate for your putter to move through is the best exercise I can prescribe for you. Moving this putter in a way that the sweet spot travels through the center of those two tees. Now, depending on your skill level, you can make those tees and the distance between them slightly farther or slightly closer together. But as you progress and improve with this exercise, you'd wanna be getting the tee pegs closer and closer together so that you're getting the absolute center of the putter when you strike the ball every single time. That leads not only to better uh, accuracy in terms of directional control, the impact that that has on the quality and the consistency of your speed, the delivery of the energy that you transfer into the ball cannot be overstated. So once you've tried that a few times without the ball, go ahead and hit some putts with the ball right in the center of the gate and just move the putter through the gate and strike the ball. You'll notice I'm doing these putts at the moment to no target. And sometimes that can be very beneficial. It can really allow you to work on some feels and the mechanics that you're trying to train. Obviously, once you're out on the golf course, you're not gonna have the tee pegs in the ground. You're gonna have to putt and get more target orientated. But oftentimes when there's a hole involved in your putting drills, you become more worried about whether the ball went in the hole as opposed to whether or not you completed the task that you were looking to do. So I'm taking this and focusing on the outcome of the drill. Am I moving the putter through the gate successfully? And that's really how I'm judging my success or failure in this e exercise. I'm not so worried at the moment about where that ball is going to go. So take, a, take that as an idea that maybe next time you practice your putting, don't go and stand next to the hole and try and hole everything. If you're working on some mechanics, literally go through the drill that you're trying to do and take away the focus of the hole. And the final drill that I'll share with you today is probably the most difficult one to do consistently, but if you can master this, then you are gonna be a much better putter. You're gonna require the gate drill for your putter still here. And if you're putting outside where you're not in the same place every time, you're gonna to need to mark a point on the ground so that you can bring your ball back and putt from exactly the same position. That's why we're really using the putter gate drill here. And then I'm gonna take this putting gate that I have here as a training aid. Again, you could just use tee pegs and place this in the ground just out in front of your ball. Now, this one has a 60 millimeter gap there. The gate is 60 millimeters, which is 
not the most difficult one that you can do. So again, just like the putter gate drill for the head itself, the gate drill that you do with the, the ball here is going to help you, first of all, control your start line, super important. And as you get better at this skill, you wanna make the distance, the gap, the space here of the gate much smaller each time you practice. This is a hard one, as I say, but if you get this right, you'll be managing that putter face angle extremely consistently within a tight tolerance. And that's very important if you wanna be a successful putter. If you can move your putter through the gate so that you're hitting the sweet spot and you can roll your ball through the ball gate so you're controlling start line, then you really are tackling some of the major skills required in order to be a good putter. I hope you found this video helpful. There's no doubt that measuring what happens at the wrist angles is extremely valuable if you want to improve any area of your golf, putting included. And if you want to learn more about the wrists and how you can improve your wrist motion for the rest of your swing, check out the link down below for more videos on wrist training.